attack your body. <laughs> so my voice is even a little scratchier than it was last night, but praise God, I wasn't going to give in. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come to you this night, God. We're ready to worship and praise your holy name. Father God, I ask that you would pour out your spirit in this service this night, God. Do what only you can do, God, and bless your people. Let your healing flow and deliverance flow and miracles flow. Let salvation come into the house tonight, God, for those that need that. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we give you all of us this night, Father God. We give you all of us. We worship. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. There is no one like you. Father God, strengthen us this night. Touch those that could not be here tonight, God. Let your healing virtue go into each home or hospital room or rehab. Father God, where our people are. And let healing power flow in their bodies. In the name of Jesus, I'll forever give you the praise and honor and glory. Amen. Amen. Stay standing here as we start to sing. I'll be a friend to Jesus. 386.
33, I'll fly away. Amen. It could happen, right? It could happen in five minutes. It could happen right now. in your life. I heard some preacher that was a very interesting thing I heard the other night as we get ready to take up the offering about standing in the gap and where is God when you're standing in the gap and he had a guy standing on this side of the stage and this side of the stage facing away from him and he talked about 
when you're standing in the gap, that's right where God is with you. He's always with you. And so this represented what was behind him. This represented what was in front and ahead of him. And he says, you, you think you're taking a step closer to God, which you are, but then God takes another step. Because when he sees your faithfulness, then he's going to make you stretch even more. And he takes, you take another step, he takes another step. He's always in the gap with you, leading you on. And I love what that preacher said. He said, what God did to deliver you in the past is what he did back then. But now he's going to do a new thing as you go forward. Let me tell you, God is always full of surprises. And he will bless you like you've never been blessed before. So just know, if you're going through a lot right now, and there's a lot of people that are, he's in the gap with you. Amen? He's not some far away God. He's right here. If Jesus lives inside you, the Holy Ghost is there. He's right here, as close as, as he can be inside you. So as we get ready to uh, give tonight, you know, I praise God. When I was getting ready tonight, in quite a hurry and a flurry because there was so much traffic. I don't know where it all came from tonight. But uh, I drive home from Palmetto from work, and I just kind of sat there waiting to go across the bridge. You know, I'm just going, mm hmm <laughs> And usually it moves a little bit faster. But um, anyway, got home, had a little bit to eat, and I said, and I was not feeling that great, but I said, God, I love you, and I want more of you, and I want more of your word. And I want to hear the man of God tonight. And so, like I've done every night during this revival, I, I sat down at my desk and I wrote a check with a purpose to give into this revival. Amen? So I encourage you because not just giving money, okay, but giving from your heart. When you give from in here, if he lays something on your heart and you give from in here, there's nothing he won't do for you and he will bless you. He has blessed me every single night of this revival. Amen. And he wants all of you. You don't want just a little bit. It's good to read your word. It's good to have prayer time. It's good to fast. You know, and it's good to give. Because he created us to give. And he created for us to receive from him. So that's how it works. You give what he's already given you, basically. And then he gives more back unto you. Amen. So as you prepare to give tonight, give with a purpose and say, God, what would you have me do tonight? Last night of the revival, probably. And what would you have me do? So just give what God lays on your heart. And, and sometimes that can be tricky because he'll say, do this. And you'll go, huh? What? <laughs> and, uh, but don't ever question God because what he lays on your heart to do, he's already made a provision already yes. to replace that and even more. So you can give again, even in a greater capacity. So, if I could have the ushers at this time. And I asked God on the way to church. I said, God, I'm believing for your healing for my body. Amen. You know, uh, Brother Bowling, you might not know this, but when I worked for Publix for so many years, I wore out my joints, my hip joint, my knee joints, my ankles. And when I left Publix uh, a little over a year ago now, um, I still, they, they told me today at work, they said, you're limping pretty hard, Ed. And I said, yeah, when you don't have any cartilage in your right hip, it can be a little cumbersome to get around sometimes. But, uh, but I believe in God for his healing power to touch me. Amen? Oh, yeah, we can, we can go to the doctor, we can go to the surgeon, get new parts put in but I'd rather have Jesus put a new part in oh, yeah. amen yeah. Oh, yeah. where he actually get keep you get to keep your original part he just heals you he just makes it like it's all brand new I know I've been healed of asthma before so I know what his healing power is so let's get ready to give tonight everyone stand if you would as we're gonna I want you to really worship tonight as you give because uh, it is a form of worship and it's a powerful form of worship so just as you drop something in, just say, God, this is for you. Amen? All right. Father, we just thank you right now. 
We worship, we adore you, God. There is no one like you. We thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. Father God, I just ask that you would move, move on the hearts of people tonight, God, and let us worship you through our giving. In the very name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, amen. cake option, which is this Saturday. Uh, we really want you to come out and participate. If you're not making a cake, and you're not participating that way, then come out and buy a cake. Amen? Put, put finance into missions, because this is where it all goes. Different Boy, I tell you, we blessed a lot of different mission projects last year. And so, um, let's, uh, let's honor our missions director here in the church, which is Sister Beth, and you know, Brother Harold Hanks is going to be here with us to do the auction. He was here with us last year. But it's at 2 o'clock over in the fellowship hall. Come with, with your pockets loaded with money to yes. buy these cakes. Right. Because uh, it's more than just buying the cake. And all these cakes are very awesome. But it's given to the kingdom. Amen. Come with a purpose to bless missions. Um, and... Brother Hanks will stay with us for the Sunday morning service, right? Just the Sunday morning? Both, Sunday morning and Sunday night. So you don't want to miss, okay? He'll be preaching Sunday morning and Sunday night this weekend. All right, Sister Taylor, come bless us.
good and that his mercy endures forever and I think the Lord delights in pouring out mercy and grace and goodness to his people but Jesus also said you have not because you asked him. he's just waiting to pour out a blessing uh, when you're in need and so if you've got a burden if you've got a, a need if you've got a, a desire in your heart pour out to him and he'll, he'll, he will respond to that cry Oh 
that he still lifts our burdens away. I'm so glad that he's the one that takes care of us. He's watching over us. And what a mighty God we serve. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. It has been an honor to have Brother and Sister Bowling to be with us in service and also in our home. I have just counted it a, a blessing. I've counted it an honor. We've had some great time of fellowship. And I just appreciate them. I appreciate what they live and stand for. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And uh, I just want you to keep them in your prayers. Uh, they're going to be in Arcadia Sunday. And then Sebron uh, the middle of next week. And let's just pray that everywhere that they go, that they'll be used of God. Amen. Souls will be saved. Amen. Amen. Brother Bowling, come on. I don't know if y'all want to sing tonight. I just want you to make yourself at home. And just, we're going to worship the Lord with them tonight. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Praise God. I'll tell you, we've just been enjoying ourselves since we've been here. And praise God. Uh, Thank you for the offering, what you give, and may God bless you for that. He will. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He always does. Can outgive God, Never. no matter monetarily and doing and working. You just can't do it. He's uh, way beyond us. Amen. Yeah. But uh, we say thank you for everything you've done, and we uh, also appreciate Brother and Sister Spratman and their uh, love for God, their good spirit, amen, of the Lord in their life. And uh, we're just uh, happy to get to be here, and they've just treated us wonderfully, amen, just like family, and fed us real good, and we, are just, we just enjoyed it so much and thankful for them. Hallelujah. And I know you are and you should be. Amen. Shepherd reaches out into your life and shows you the way and helps you and guides you. And that's all for your benefit. Most everything a pastor does is for you and not their self. And that's important. So we need to remember that. Praise God. And we say thank you for uh, having us here. Hallelujah. How many is going to help me preach tonight? Amen. Matthew 26, verse 39. I want my wife to testify. She's not feeling too good tonight, but I want her just to testify here. Amen. I appreciate the Lord. I'm glad for His goodness. The song, Thank You, Lord, for Your Blessings on Me, has been over and over in my mind today. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes we take life for granted. We take the things that He does for us because it's only through Him that we even get these things. All right. So He yes. knows where I'm at. Um, I've been going through some change for the last few months. And last Wednesday night, um, I had gone up, as I usually do, to help pray for people. And the pastor said, the Lord has impressed upon my heart to pray for you. And the very words that he prayed over me is exactly what I needed. Right. Yeah. And from that point to tonight, things have been different. You know, uh, a woman and a mother and a wife, we worry. We worry about everything. We worry... Uh, about our children, about different things in life, and I and I do. I, I, I have to confess, I worry too much. But the Lord yes. spoke to my heart that night, and He put something there that's never been there before. Glory. And you know, when we get desperate enough and we want it bad enough, yes. He will supply our need. Yes. And I'm glad uh, that He is that kind of God. I'm glad mm. to have been here. We've enjoyed ourselves. It's been a wonderful week, and I just pray that the Lord continues to bless and. The church will grow and uh, more unified and, and more people coming in because he can do that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we, yeah. He uses right. us to do that. Yeah. And so yeah. we got to get out there and we got to work. We got to knock on doors. We got to pray. We got to call. You know, the pastor can't do it all. Right. I'm sorry, right. but he just cannot do it all. He can only stretch so far. Right. And I'm so glad the brothers and sisters Spratman, they treated us wonderful this week. And I'm just so glad you've been here. I hope we've helped you. Uh, I've been helped. I'm the evangelist wife, and I've been helped. I appreciate the Lord, and I'm so glad to be here. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. St. Matthew 26, verse 39. 
I appreciate my wife. Amen. Took her away from her family at 17 years of old, years of age. I was 21. She was 17. I don't recommend that today. They're not ready at that age today. Amen. But uh, we, we're appreciative for all God's done. Hallelujah. St. Matthew chapter 26, verse 39, speaking about Jesus. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, <laughs> saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Amen. I want to use that first part of that scripture. <laughs> And he went a little further. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. God, you are way above us, but yet you're in us. You're high and lifted up, but your train fills the church. Thank you, Lord, for the strength and mercy and grace you bestowed on our lives. Anoint me tonight. Direct me. Help people. I pray you'll meet needs in this house. In the name of Jesus, we pray right now. Amen. You may be seated. There are many attributes about the Lord. There are many things that He does. There's so many wonders that He performs. There's nobody like Him. He's never met His superior. There's been no one beside him. He don't have anybody equal to him. In fact, he stands alone. I like this. The great I am. Amen. And you and I tonight, we have limited resources. Amen to who he really is. His mercy goes beyond reason. His grace we have unmerited favor given to us. Amen. Grace takes us to heaven. Mercy stops us from going to hell. I like what the Bible said about him. And there's a song I sing like that. Never been a man like Jesus. Amen. You can be sick unto death. Amen. In one touch. Of the master's strong hand is all it takes. <clears throat> but I love this scripture we read tonight in this text. And he went a little further. Praise God. Looking for a place to pray. But I love this attribute about our Savior tonight. When you thought that you've seen it all. He goes a little further. When you thought you've reached the boundaries and you've reached the limit of mercy, He goes a little further. When you think that here is an end to His power, He goes a little further. When you think you're at the end of your rope, He comes and ties a knot in that rope. Praise God. Just when you think that the plan you have is ran out, He steps up to bat for you. When you think His grace can't carry you any longer. That hand that is not shortened, that arm that is not shortened will pick you up when you're weak and you can't make amen another step. He comes along and says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I love him tonight. Can you say amen? Amen. The Bible said his strength is made perfect. How? In our weakness. Amen. I love joy, but it ain't mine. The joy of the Lord is our strength. It's his joy. He goes a little further. Say amen. Mark chapter 2, the man bedfast with the palsy 
Jesus is preaching in the house. The crowd is so crowded inside and out that you can't even get in there. And there's this man with the palsy and four nameless men. We don't even know their names. They go on the roof. They tear a hole big enough in it to lift this man down, praise God, to where Jesus is. I'm telling you, if you get desperate enough, you'll tear the roof off. You'll go to an extreme. You'll get that extraordinary power of the Lord. And if you get desperate and passionate, you will reach and the Master's hand will be there. The Bible said when Jesus saw those men's Faith, praise God. Then the answer came. You can have an answer right now. The healer is in this house tonight. We don't have to go here, T. Day Jakes. We don't have to go here, Rod Parsley. We don't have to go here, another mega church pastor. He's in this church where we are at. And if you have a need. There is a provision in the house. If you've got a backslidden child, he is the Savior. If there is a devil on your back, he can get him off. Amen. Because Jesus will go a little further. Oh, God. Now, look at this. The first thing Jesus did was he saw their faith. And the second thing he did, verse 5, he said, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. They got more than what they expected. Amen. He saved the boy and then he healed the boy. Jesus went another step further. He does the unexpected. He does not only the possible things for us. He does the impossible. They got more than what they expected. He goes beyond our expectations and our mentality and what we think. He is more. Praise God. Joy in Him. Him, peace in Him, deliverance in Him. Amen. One church got to going door to door asking people, would you like to be prayed for? Most of them would say, no, no. They came to this one house and they asked, would you like to be prayed for? There was three or four of them, amen, going around praying for people. Finally, this home said, yes, I got a son with asthma. Real bad. They came in there and they laid hands on that boy and had that asthma. Amen. And you know what? It never completely healed. But he was better. But you know what did happen? He Nobody knew it really. They didn't know it. Of course his parents did. But he had these warts all over his feet and legs. And by the time they left out of there and left him, amen, every wart on his foot, every wart on his leg was gone because Jesus goes a little bit farther. He don't just bring a temporary band-aid. He can make whole. That means back to normal. I mean, when he healed the lepers and their eyeballs were gone their eyeballs drew back in the socket when he healed them and made them whole their fingers grew back out and their flesh turned white he is a fix it God fixes souls and bodies all over the land praise God he puts pharmacists out of business he puts doctors out of business because he fixes problems that nobody else can do. Say amen. amen. 
He's more than the Red Cross. He's more than, amen, the candy strappers. He's more than the RNs. He's more than the support groups. He answers questions that no man can. He knocks on hearts. He hears the cries and the prayers at midnight. Amen. He goes a little further. Praise God. He's went further in this building for everybody multiple times. You just can't think of some of them right now. Sometimes God brings things back to my remembrance and I just start laughing and just joy. I forgot all about that. What a mighty God we serve. Can you say amen? amen. Mark or Matthew ate the leper. Leprosy was horrible. They were driven out of the villages and settlements. They lived in their own colonies. Amen. Verse 2, there came a leper, and the first thing he did was worship Jesus. And the Bible said he came saying, Lord, if thou wilt, if thou just would, Thou canst make me clean. That is so much faith. He already said, we already know you can do it. If you just do it, I'd be all right. The leper had no other option, had no other solution, had no physician, had no source, no medical skilled person. If friends could cure him, he would have already been cured. If medical science could accomplish that, he would have already had it. Jesus is still the answer. Family cannot heal your heart. No book, no program can solve the sin problem. No friend can turn your life around. But Jesus steps up in the batter's box and says, I'll pinch hit for you. I'll hit the home run for you. Jesus goes a little further. All things will pass away. All things will become new. Amen. Jesus Amen. did not ignore this leper. He did not turn him aside. He did not walk away. He did not stop him. Then he let him come to him. And verse 3, the Bible said, Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, yeah. saying, Be Thou clean. Yes, yes. Amen. yes. Amen. Thank you. If we could just grasp just what I said and quit letting it be history to us and quit letting it be thousands of years ago and quit letting it just be in the Bible and realize, man, he does it now. Hey, man, this, this leper's dirty, but Jesus went a little further. This leper's uncleaned. He's contagious. Hey, man, he's not quarantined at the moment. He's diseased. God has time for you tonight. God will do the impossible for you tonight. God will go further. He'll go the second mile. He'll pick up your broken pieces and he'll put them back together because he just keeps on coming. Yes, he does. Somebody asked about the Texas Rangers. Said, what makes them so special? I mean, how come, how come you Texas Rangers are so much better than just other authorities and other police? You know what one of them said? His answer was, it's because when we go out after them, we don't stop till we get them. Amen. 
Jesus never gives up on you. He never gave up on me. He found you where you were. Just take one step toward him and he'll take the rest toward your life. Amen. There are what was called grace houses around the country. They are transitional homes for women who have become sinners and caught in crimes and go into prison and when they come out they go into these grace houses amen they live under the same roof with others like their condition they eat from the same table they read the same bible and they seek the same god and they study the word and they learn a trade and they get a new identity and at one of their fundraisers one lady was told to give her amen testimony of being a prostitute and a drug addict and an alcoholic she lost all she had lost her children, lost her marriage and her freedom but then Jesus found her I said Jesus found her amen and what was amazing was her repeated rhythm in her testimony she said I was but now I am I was on drugs but now I'm clean. I was on the street, but now I'm on my feet. I was in the dark, but now I'm in the light. I was in the bar, but now I'm in the choir. I was singing the blues, but now I'm a singing grace. How does that happen? Because Jesus goes a little farther and said, I love you no matter where you're at or how you are. Your teacher may give up on you in the public school system, but Jesus will go a little farther. The authorities, amen, and the police may give up on you. Your family may say, you're through, and we're through with you. But one touch from the master's hand. Amen. Woo! Praise God. He knows it all. Yes, he does. Jesus fed 5,000 besides women and children. Let's say he fed 20,000, 15,000, whatever. Five loaves, two fishes. Amen. Long John Silver, two piece. Amen. Praise God. And they went in them little fish bites. No, no. Hey man, when he got done feeding thousands of people from a little brown bag borrowed from a boy who we don't even know his name. Hey man, what did they have left over? Twelve baskets of fish left over over. That's one for each disciple. Praise God. He goes beyond. He goes a little further. He goes all the way and some where others won't go. And he never leaves us alone in the dark. He will come shining through. He does more than we expect and more than we think and more than we even believe sometimes. Amen. Amen. Peter walked on the water. You know that amazing? A lot of the miracles we read in the Bible we put in children's stories. David. Man, that was real. Jonah in the belly of the well. That was real. Peter walking on the water. It happened. Yep. Marvelous miracle. But there was more than that that happened in that episode. He walks back to the boat. He don't swim back. He walks on the water. He wasn't waiting. Then two things more happen. When he gets back to the boat after walking out and walking back, 
gets back to the boat, the storm stops. Yeah. And the Bible said immediately, they're on the other side. Three things at one time. Amen. They're in the middle of the sea. The storm is over. And they're at the dock. Woo! My God. He goes a little further. We can't explain it. It's not a misprint. It's in the KJV. It's right. It's in the Black Book contract. My God said it written in red, my Lord. I'm going to hold on to that. Goes a little further. Old preacher friend of mine, dead and gone. His wife could make the best gumbo I ever ate. Oh. They're dead and gone. Preached for years. Lived long years. Lived in their 80s. He passed out tracks everywhere he went. I don't care if you go out to eat. I don't care if you go to Walmart. He's passing out tracks. Thousands of them. Every time you eat, leave a track, table, go. Then years went by. And somehow, one of his tracks, and he has never been out of the United States, one of his tracks got in India. And it got to being blown by the wind down the street. And a lady found it. Picked it up, had it interpreted to her. And it was a salvation track. She got saved. She started an orphanage. She had multiple children for years and finally got in contact with Brother Drum in the United States and told that story to him. <sighs> Woo! From a printing company to the hands of the man of God at a restaurant table in the hands of somebody at an airport in the plane off the plane in a foreign country in a certain town lost it amen blowing down the street somebody found it somebody interpreted it. he goes a little further my god amen how great is that it's I'm telling how many children were saved and how many ministries came out of that orphanage and how many are still coming out of that orphanage. Amen. Praise God. He goes a little further. No account in Scripture is better illustrated how far he will go than Luke 15. Luke 15 has been tagged as the lost chapter. Not that it was lost out, but that it contains three lost things. The lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. And I will just deal with the sheep. The sheep can get distant. And the shepherd has to constantly watch the flock. We don't know why this sheep got out. There was a hundred, and one of them, maybe a storm scared it, could have been a predator, could have been the howl of a wolf, could have been a wounded fall. But when he, when the shepherd counts the sheep and goes through, one, two, three, four, five, six, before nightfall, 48, 47, 87, 88, Eight and nine, ninety one, ninety two, ninety three, ninety four, ninety five, ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight, ninety nine. Oh boy, 
goes through counts again, finds out there's one missing. He don't ask nobody anything about it. He don't ask any questions. He don't go get the board and discuss it. He doesn't debate the issue. He don't dial 911 if he could have. He don't call for the live squad. He don't notify anybody. Amen. He don't care that it's night time. He gets to his hut. He gets the coat, he gets the staff, he gets the light, he goes after that one lost sheep. Why? It is the nature of the shepherd to find you. Amen. He didn't leave the light on and hope he came back. He didn't tell nobody else. He pursued the lost sheep. He went after it. Can I tell you tonight that Jesus will never stop nudging you. He will never stop hunting you. He will never stop convicting you. He will never stop searching and never stop prying into your life. He'll go up and down the hillside. He'll go deep into the wilderness of your life. He will go deep in the valley. Praise God. I don't know how long he searched. I don't know how many creeks and rivers that he crossed. But what I do know, he would not stop. He would not quit. He would not do but what ought to be done. And the Bible said, Amen, go after that which is lost until he finds it. Somebody could have come up to him and said, Listen, Shepherd, you've really done a lot. You, you, don't, you don't have to. Why don't you just stop? But he went a little further. No! I've got to keep going. But uh, listen, the sheep will probably, it'll probably already be dead. No! I gotta keep going. Uh, he'll come home later, Shepherd. I've gotta go a little further. Amen. But the Shepherd has got nail prints. Amen. In his feet. But he's gonna go a little further. He's bleeding from the back by the stripes and the ditches of blood. But he bears the cross on anyway. His thorns are about his head, mixed with the dust, the perspiration, the sweat, amen, the spittle, the blood running down his face. I've got to go a little further, amen. But listen, you've already been to heaven and back to earth, already from the cradle to the cross to the tomb. How far are you going to go, amen? And I can hear the answer from that shepherd. I'll walk into that church service. Amen. And Somerset, praise God, Florida. And I'll tap that individual on the shoulder. And I'll say, you got to get right with God. you got to get right with my father. I can hear him say, I've got a myth lab to find. I've got a beer joint to go into. I've got a dysfunctional family. I've got to reach there's a divorce court that I've got to get to. I've got to reach them. Yeah. <laughs> he paid a debt. He did not owe. I owed a debt. I could not pay. I needed someone. Wash my sins away. And now I have a brand new song. Amazing grace. Christ Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We forget 
We're too busy to think about what he done for us. We're too involved to appreciate the Lord. Too many irons in the fire to just take time to be thankful and appreciative. Oh, I'm not bragging on myself, but you hear this preacher. <laughs> I owe on both of those rigs out there, that truck and that trail, I owe on both of them. I still got over three years to pay for them, but you know what? Hardly a day goes by that I don't say it from my mouth and think it in my mind. Thank you, God, for this place to live and this truck that takes me there. Yeah. Oh, God. He don't just pardon us. He lives in us. He don't just satisfy things. The Bible said He abundantly satisfies. He don't just give life. John 10.10 10, We have life more abundantly. He always goes further. Yes. Yay God. Amen. Yes, Help me with a song. Let's raise our hands right now and just thank God. Oh, God. Thank you, God. I want to open my mouth and say it. Thank you, Lord. I don't want to be quiet about it. I don't want to just whisper it. I want to show my appreciation. Thank you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. You are the way, the truth, and life. You are the way where there seemed to be no way, Jesus. Oh. 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 Hallelujah. Humble. Oh, my God. Oh. oh, you might say tonight, but Brother Bowling, you don't know how far away I am. No, I don't. But what I do know is he goes a little further. Just when you think you're outside of the reach of mercy. And you've lived in sin so long. He goes a little further. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the enemy says you messed up too big this time. He goes a little further. Yes. Yes. Oh God. Oh God. Sing softly for me. Oh, God. Oh, I believe you're my healer. Oh, yes. I believe you are all I you need him to go further tonight somewhere in your life? Do you need him to go further in some situation in your life tonight? I'm talking to the church. I'm talking to members. I'm talking to visitors. I'm talking to sinners. I'm talking to backsliders. Whatever your condition is, whatever the circumstance no matter how bad, how trivial, how deep, no matter where it's at, it's a frustration. It's not just right. He can help you. It could be you've been prayed for 50 times for the same thing. Make it 51 tonight. There's faith in this house. It could be you've been up here 20 times for the same procedure. One more time. Yes. 
will go a little further. You toss it over in your mind. You can't sleep at night. You're a wreck. Touch us, God. Help us tonight, God. You've talked to professionals. You've talked to friends. You can't get an answer. He goes a little further. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to do. You don't know who to talk to. He goes a little further. He'll help you tonight. You must realize where you're at. You must come to your senses of how you are. You must think and get the picture. You're not where you need to be. And He will come a little further for your life. No matter what it is, He can do the major or the minor. He can do the big or the minute. He can do the great or the little. He will go a little further. Look at this. Twelve people up here tonight. Now the rest of us all to come and help our friends. If you can just sit on this front pew, come. Leave this front pew for people that need to sit. Everybody else, let's come and stand and kneel. These people need our help. Amen. Maybe you're here and you really can't stand and you need help. Come on. Amen. Let God help your life. Come and pray with one another. He will go a little further. If you'll make that step, he'll make two. If you'll make one step, he'll make ten. If you come toward him, he'll make the rest of it up. He's God. Oh, sing it for me. Oh, God. Woo! I Oh, my God. 
believe he's your healer? Amen. Do you believe he's all that you need? He is. He's more than enough. He is more than enough. Brother Bowen has been trying to tell us in these last few nights, there's so much more to God than what that we are receiving. So much more to God than what we are accepting. And God's just waiting for us to open up. Yes. And say, all right, Lord, here I am, you know. God, help me to empty out more than I can get more of Him. Right. Amen. Right. Sometimes we may need to pray, God, give me a bigger cup because I know there's a whole lot more of you. Oh, yes. Those grandbabies, especially Mariah, she likes coffee. And there's sometimes they want to get those little bitty coffee cups. And they want you to put something in that little coffee cup. Whether it's tea, and then they'll pretend like it's coffee. But I've noticed, and especially today, that Mariah didn't want the little one. She saw me drinking coffee and she said, Papa, I want some. I said, you know that your mama don't like you to have it, but I like it, Papa. I poured her half of my cup. She woofed it down and she looked at me and said, I want more. I said, well, I want some too. I don't drink it quite as fast as what you do. So what are you trying to say, Brother Spratlin? She's moved up to a bigger cup. Oh, yeah. Sometimes we need to move up to a bigger cup with God, don't we? Oh, God, help me, Lord. I don't want just a thimble for him. God, help me to bring a wash tub to church and say, God, here I am, fill it up. Because believe me, God has enough in heaven to fill it up. Hallelujah. Let's don't live beneath our privileges. Let's don't live beneath our blessings. Trust God. Believe God. And if you'll believe God, then you will trust God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Bowen. I know others have already been testifying of how that this revival is ministered to them, but I tell you, it's ministered to me. Thank God for His Word. And I still keep going back to this one thing. I know He talked about daily sin, but I cannot get that thought out of my mind, sin in your shoes. You know, don't let nothing hinder you. If you have to stop and empty your shoes, clean them out. Amen. Don't let those little things keep you from Hey, I'm going to tell you, every one of us battle that. I battle that. And sometimes we just have to say, God, get the thorn out of my hand. Just that little bitty thorn. God, help me to get the sand down of my shoes. Will you stand with us? Don't forget about the cake auction. Those of you that are baking things, if you've not already contacted Sister Beth, please make sure that you do. And uh, cake auction is at 2 o'clock. Brother Hanks is going to be here, as you know, with probably no doubt a lot more stories to tell in between selling cakes. Yeah. Tell us about mission. Tell us about what God's doing. And God is doing a miraculous thing and marvelous things. And, uh, you know, Brother Hanks, he, he, doesn't, he, he does a lot of mission work now in Africa. And he's over there a lot of times around the Muslims. And, and if he'd ever take the time to tell you, there's been a few times that his bush has been shaken because of bullets flying and things like that. But you know what? He goes right back and he says, I'm not going to die until it's my time to go. Right. Amen. So uh, come on out and be with us and invite other people to come on out and buy cake for missions. You could not buy for a better reason. We're not making Publix, Winn-Dixie, or, or any other store rich. We are giving to the kingdom of God. We're investing in souls, investing in people that are giving their lives to tell others about the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you so much. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you, God, for reminding me tonight. God, we can go a little further because, God, you're going to take us a little further. Lord, whenever the children of Israel could not even see because that their, their faith was so low, and God, they'd been in slavery, and God, they kept wanting to run back to other things. But Lord, you was telling them, Canaan land is just in sight. And Lord, if they would just listen to you, they could have gotten there 40 years sooner. But God... Help us to hear you and help us to know that Jordan, it, it does not have to be an obstacle. My Lord, it can be a miracle for Lord. You can make a miracle for our crossing there. My Lord, let us press over into Canaan land. Let us, flow, let us go into that land that's flowing with milk and honey. Father, let us find it to be daily in our walk with you. And Father, we will fail not to give you the praise, the glory, the honor. 
Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Make sure you're back Sunday. Let's worship the Lord.